Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Tis I, the Jabber Magpie, bringing you a spot more of amnesia of a dark descent. I hope your anuses are puckered in pure excitement, sexual fury, and abject fucking horror. We're in the cistern, which, after being in that prison, is nice, bright, well-lit, and just... I want to run around it like a giddy child off his tits on too many pixie sticks. Or whatever the fuck they call those. Uh, that would have been too easy to get through there. Or whatever they call those um, dreadfully sugared candy sticks. Demptio oleum. Oil drainage. Yeah, I sense I'm gonna need this, so I can oil me up, Garcon. The water is too deep to traverse safely. Oh, every game in the world has always like this. Water is too deep. You're going to have to drain this fucking thing. Its gears need to be greased. Ooh, really grinds my gears. Let's get some more oil if need be. No need to fill it again. Daniel is very confident on the fact that there's no need to fill this around oil again. Why? Why would you stick a goddamn pipe there? Fuck you. And if all else fails, brute force and goddamn ignorance. Your fault, Alexander, for your poor engineering choices. Yeah. Let's see who's laughing now. Uh, the one on the right is buggered. Drain the sewer, fix the bridge. Alexander knew that there must be a way to finish the ritual before it was too late. He had to teach his friend to harvest vit vitae. That much was certain. was Herbert, our good friend and explorer buddy who helped us find the orb. This is all his bloody fault. Now, if memory serves me well, in order to get this bridge working, we need to set everything up completely the same. Unfortunately, this one is a little esoteric, so we've got to do the best measurements we can. Such as that sort of corresponds to directly underneath that pipe on the left. So the top half should be... Oh, uh, I'd say jobs are good on there. That middle weight looks like it should be its bottom section should be hovering parallel to the top section of the pipe right behind it took me bloody ages to figure this out the first time I played tell you that uh, one more for good measure I think Harvard Nagila Harvard and the one here 
its top should be just hitting the bottom of that little joint there in the pipe. So, oh, oh, that can't be right. That's nowhere near. I think I've buggered it. And we also need these bloody pipes. Oh, for God's sakes. Those stupid doors. No matter what, we'll just keep on collapsing down. Balls. Balls, balls, balls. Chocolate salty balls. Now I know if we bring a build a bigger base for the boxes. I'm doing this properly, I want to be able to walk through the door at a pleasant fucking speed. I don't want to have to crouch. And bingo! Daniel of Mayfair, engineering genius. As is the Jabbery Magpie here. What lies beneath door number two? One down, two up, one down. Ooh, hello, saucy minx. Isn't a game fun when somebody already knows every single bloody puzzle there is? Let me see. Machine. The work I have put into this machine is unequaled by the reasoning of any man. Thought that generations of men have passed away since I first attempted to reconstruct the design is most tiring. The limitations of this world make, have made my work incredibly difficult. It has forced me to build the thing almost a hundred times larger than the delicate contraption it tries to emulate. Not to mention the flow of tamed lightning crudely replaced by pressurised steam pushing its way through pipes and turbines. It shames me to think of what the inventor would have thought of my monster where, where he works with a magnifying glass to carefully fix all the parts. I push five men to erect a tower of wrought out iron in the hope it will have even the tiniest hint of, of the power in a traveller's locket. Yeah, there we go. We're getting the first hints now that Alexander is actually a fucking space alien. From outer space. trying his best to get back home to his beloved, but fortunately, he found a new beloved in Daniel. So up, down, down, up, I think that's right. We'll have that wooden crank, cause, you know, I just want one. Oh, no way, it's down, up, up, down. My bad. Bingo. That seems to have got you. Is that you? What are you doing? Oh, it's Alexander speaking to me directly. Daniel, darling, come back to bed. You're just playing silly billies again. And so we have here one pipe, two pipes, three pipes. So we need a pipe here and the far left. A B 
big long pipe here. You're not an openable chest. Huh. As I search wildly for another pipe. Hello! I'm here to lay some pipe. Hello. There's a distinct lack of artwork or heraldry around here to talk about. It's most disconcerting. Especially for the young gentlemen about town. Ah, bingo. Nope. Foiled by doors. Fucking come on. Job is a good un. Turbines of industry are charging as we speak. All this to get a bloody bridge moving. You could have just used a pulley and a crank, really. The beautiful wild orchid seemed a testament to nature's strength, being able to grow inside Brennenberg. Alas, it was Alexander's studies and care which enabled the flower to blossom. You could imagine Alexander being the type of person who'd spend four hours with a bonsai plant. For a very delicate art. Oh, and it's still broken. Fantastic. Yep. The purpose of the Inner Sanctum had always been to study the orbs and find a way to force them to yield the power. However, he was still unaware of this. Hmm. Now, I know for a fact, because I read the goddamn interview... You're conserving water from the spring. Yes, it enables me to control the water in the drain sewers to some extent. Also, it can be used for all sorts of purposes. Like the drink? Yeah, well, that too. But mostly to run different machines. Ah, like water mills. Exactly. Just the sounds of Daniel and Alexander having a fucking pool party here in the cistern. Oh, splash me, you cheeky devil. Yeah, I read the interview where they put in the fucking water monster in only one level just to make you shit yourself around water. Apparently you can hear somebody in here. Oh, there we go, did you hear that? Yeah, whatever. Yep. Yep. Whoa. Yeah, few of my ninjutsu. More oil, more tinder boxes. The tinder box god. So we have absolutely nothing to fear from I know you're just doing that to make me freak the fuck out. Declantio fluxum aqua cloaca. <laughs> cloaca. 7th of August, 1839. There is no denying that Alexander puts a lot of faith into what I can only describe as magic. I'm not surprised. Even while traveling across Europe, I assumed I would have to embrace the supernatural to save my mind and life. As a novice, I do everything in my power to stay focused and not dwell too much on my own doubts. Alexander woke me up early and told me it was time we got started on our work. He was obviously excited to get going and we headed downstairs to the old dungeon where he preferred to attempt his rituals. 
It turns out that Alexander is a true Renaissance man, paralleled only by da Vinci, I'm sure. He showed me several rooms fitted for specific research, such as anatomy studies, alchemy, and botany. The crown of Brennenburg must be the inner sanctum, a most hallowed ground where we shall attempt to permanently banish the orb's shadow. Alexander forming his own Brennenburg school of witchcraft and wizardry. Whoa. Ow. His fucking face planted against a wall. Oh, a fish! Hey, little guy. You are completely 2D. No offence to you. Yeah. Alexander's a bit magical there. Come to my castle and learn the dark arts. Whoop! Crack shot. Because I'm on crack. I'll teach you how to brew fame, bottle love, and make some cracking magic meth. 8th of August, 1839. I could never be certain until today that I was on the right path. Using my orb, Alexander managed to channel its power unto us. The inner sanctum flared with blue, fiery light and I could feel the same things I felt in the dark chamber in Algeria. It was like standing in a mad whirlpool of impressions. It was terrifying, but Alexander kept calm and wielded strange tools of science in order to tame the storm. Suddenly, the blue light was stained by strains of red, and the walls burst with pulsating tissue resonating with the scene. Alexander quickly covered the orb in some cloth, and the unspeakable thing vanished. Apparently, the orb's shadow is closer than Alexander thought. He said I should prepare for a warding ritual tomorrow. I'm not sure what he expects, but I have a bad feeling about this. Yes, I too once had an experience in Algeria where a man felt my orbs in a darkened room. It didn't pulsate with blue light though. Woo. But my fleshy walls definitely exploded. I would also like to say on the previous note where uh, Daniel was talking about having to believe it was super supernatural to get across Europe, you don't need to do that anymore. They've brought in a European rail card. It's really, really good. Like, for 150 euros, you can get across Europe for a whole of a month on any train you want. Ooh, Mama just scolded myself. Oh, can't fool me. August 1839. It is still early, and Alexander is busy preparing for the ritual later today. Seeing him this worked up makes me question why. What does he stand to gain? I realize he is curious about it all, but surely there must be more. Is he so foolish he will attempt to tame the power of the orb? I must admit that yesterday, when Alexander flooded the inner sanctum with blue light, I realized we had but graced the orb's true potential. This might turn out to be more than escaping a creeping shadow. It might be the beginning of something truly extraordinary. Dude, you're being chased by a fucking hideous flesh monster from another plane of existence. And you found a magic orb. It's already pretty extraordinary. Let's redirect the water again, more than likely drowning the poor sod who is trapped in the uh, box down here. Whoa!
Oh well. Sorry, buddy. Sucks to be you. So that should have drained the cistern. Which I'm assuming the aforementioned poisonous fungus is down there. So I would need to get myself the cure. Yep. Ah, uh, my shit's being poisoned. Yeah, I need to get the antidote. But the bridge over there is broken. How would we sort this problem, you ask? Don't worry, ladies and gentlemen. For I am... A man. With... Ein Plan. That didn't work. That, however, should work. Yay! Getting all the way to the back. Okay, Daniel, you're going to need to do a running jump for this one, buddy. Oh! Got it. Now. Barely conscious. To the morgue! Red taint burst from the walls as it began, as if they had began to bleed. He cried out in fear at the spectacle, the spectacle beginning to consume the blue shimmer. Did your pink cloth touch the water? I need laudanum. I am bleeding. Do you see, Daniel? It has yielded. What? The shadow. For now. Come, let's get this out of here so we can get some peace. Yes, let's. Where to? Just down the corridor, to the morgue. Are there more dead men there? You did well, Daniel. Come, let's get going. Well, it is a morgue, Daniel, so I'm expecting... Oh, yes, there's... Quite a few. What happened? Where am I? What's happening? Help! Anybody! Help! Oh yeah, this is causing like Daniel to stop. <laughs> his vision's clouding, his ears are ringing. Three days. Yeah, there's obvious signs like scratch marks on the fucking wall here, people peeling back the wooden slats. This was not a pleasant way to go. Although the door has now fallen off. Almost out of fuel. I'm going to start lighting torches. Yeah, big fucking blood splatter. Not great. More lovely pictures of musculature and naked chaps. And I. I hear you breathing, Daniel. Do you hear me? Have you changed your mind? 
And I know there's a naked chap on this table, so for the sake of YouTube... Oh! Cover yourself up, love. Uh, oh, there's a lot of naked chaps in there. And more. Fucking hell, it's a bonanza. Just a half-dead penile bonanza. Jobs are good and Body can't be older than a day. Brilliant. Excellent. That's covered up. That's for the um, sake of any Americans out there. Rather prudish lot. Can't stand a cock and balls. Whereas in Europe, we love a bit of cock and balls. <laughs> I see. Say, cheeky minx. Oh, another one of Alexander's deepest, darkest thoughts. I fear for Daniel, for he is reckless. He is tainted by the approaching shadow and what will not be able to pass the gate. Will he be able to accept this in the end? My love, I've seen evil in him. How am I to trust him with the truth? What cruel irony that I have to do unto him what Agrippa did unto me. Ooh, Alexander's planning a breakup. Vaccine trials. Vaccine enabling my men to work in the fungi ridden sewer is a de def uh, definite success. Unfortunately, and only a few of the servants have been remedied as the procedure proved difficult. The others will perish, and eventually I will have to create more of them to keep my experiments running. Note that an injection of vaccinated blood will work as a shield long enough to pass the sewers without any risk of infection. It will do fine for prisoner transport. Oh, right, let's... I think I've been into a nightclub like this before. Okay, you can stop the goddamn ringing. And in here, anything decent. Dead man, dead man... Dead man... Nope, Daniel's not liking it. Not liking it whatsoever, Captain. Okay, then, in that case, we're going to have to extricate vaccinated blood. Obviously not working. Scalpel. Nope, not working. So we've created a syringe here, a copper tube with an attached hollow needle. Not exactly great, as it's got no suction or anything. And we just need to access some blood, and for some reason Daniel believes this is the easiest way. Ew. Fucking ew. You could have just sliced him open somewhere else, mate. We had tools on the table. We didn't need to drill into his brain. Like Jeffrey goddamn Dharma. Oh, Lord! We're hiding in the cockfest. The Jesse cockfest. Please don't come in here. I'm filled with weird blood and diseases now. Life cannot get much worse for me. Come on, dude. I'm in a friggin' room full of bodies. Things ain't peachy. Please, just go. Go away. <laughs> I'm losing my shit. Just some light to calm me down. Yeah, come on. No, this isn't even working. If you look at the screen, shit's still 
sliding around. Once you get the light, he usually stabilizes. We're gonna have to make a break for it. Fucking go! Woo! The blue light blinded him as it had done inside the murky tomb in Algiers. It was just an, as enchanting as he tried to approach it, but the Baron's firm hand held him back. No, Daniel. My orb. Right, so we're disinfected from diseases and now we can enter into the uh, watery abyss of the flooded area. I think that's a jolly good place to leave it. I do hope you enjoyed that one, ladies and gentlemen. I know I certainly have. Leave a like, comment, subscription, or whatever you so desire, or even a dislike. And do send me any messages about the times you have injected yourself with infected blood from corpses. I'd love to hear about them. For now, this is a Jabbering Magpie wishing you one of the very tattiest buys you have ever received. Bye!